Yeah, mini pot's great. Not as good as bowling, but bowling's uh maybe the goat drunken uh outing. I don't know. 100%. I think I, I'm mini pot uh, mini pot over bowling, but I've done more bowling, so maybe it's because uh there's a the novelty. There's yeah, a novelty. Yeah, yeah. There, yeah. There's scarcity when it comes to mini golf for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do two takes hello listeners the bing quote of the day is a library is a good place to go when you feel unhappy for there in a book you may find encouragement and comfort eb white yo you know what i'm ethan palmer you're listening to lore boys (laughs) (laughs) i i uh the new york public library main branch i think was built in 1911 on this day might on this day because that's what my my bing is telling me yeah i don't uh, i don't use bing but i had to google something and i put in the letter s and then one of my more recent uh, s related google searches was scubert dubert which is apparently Sco- <laughs> scooby-doo's full legal name <laughs> <laughs> Boy. I, I don't remember that but anyway and uh, with all the bing lore today huh yeah <laughs> we almost kind of had like a serial opening on that on that like yeah yeah fall in love with a murderer just yeah, like... <laughs> yeah this is this is how we break it to everybody that we got picked up by serial like we're <laughs> we're now a serial podcast but yeah sp- serial affiliated podcast lore boys here <laughs> uh, also mickey mouse is our mascot <laughs> <laughs> although that is definitely the intro here with the, so just it's, it's it's the lore boys you know we, we haven't been picked up by serial at time of writing it's lore boys here and we're hoping oh. to weave you i forgot a nice to say, my what? name my name's james miller i was the guy who yeah. said the thing about the library in new york yeah you remember when a guy <laughs> chimed in talking about a library that was yeah. james miller. yeah that was james miller yeah uh <laughs> I was the one who Googled Scoobert Dubert at some point recently, uh, and I am your host, <laughs> Peter O'Donoghue, and my uh, my other insurance salesman is... Ethan said his. He, he got the I, first I, I, got, I got the first one, dude. I, t- I took your thunder. I don't remember that. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> uh, I just so, Googled what Shaggy's legal name is, uh, forgetting that there's a singer named Shaggy. And what is, what is his, though? I'm kind of curious. His, his is Orville Richard Burl. Orville? Like, huh? singer? Yep. Orville. My God. I only Orville. Know I only know it wasn't me. Oh, okay. So it's Orville Richard Richard Burl. Shaggy from Scooby Doo is Norville Shaggy Rogers. What? Don't know if that's a coincidence. That Don't know hilarious. if that's a coincidence. I mean, I think cartoon Shaggy predates IRL Shaggy because Scooby yeah. Sco- but Scoobert Dubert was in the 60s, right? Yeah, but this is canon name. Because I would leave it to a uh, '60s cartoon to just he's Shaggy. There's no is, lore behind it, you know. His yeah. parents could have been big fans, and the Shaggy thing could have been like a, a childhood nickname. They called him Orville yeah. after Norville or something. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, yeah, or maybe he was he was bullied and he decided to. Who is it? Tyrion Lannister, the dwarf, who's like, a, "Wear it as your armor" or whatever. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Embrace the Shaggy. <laughs> Embrace the Shaggy. It wasn't me. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> that was your Shaggy impression, Peter? I, yeah, I, I can't remember. I can't remember. Pick up my like, bum, butt naked. Uh, yeah, the bathroom <laughs> door. Bathroom <laughs> door wasn't me. Uh, so today, <laughs> so today we're kind of doing a request. Uh, patron and OG Fitty Fo Fifty Four requested anything Tom Clancy, and I took him at his word. So I figured we'd just start with the man himself. Okay. Uh, so this is also like so we're just going to be talking about Tom Clancy himself. Uh, this is partially inspired by an episode of True Anon, which I listened to, uh, where the hosts Liz and Brace interviewed the Afghanistan war veteran and journalist uh, Matthew Farwell about a book he was writing about Tom Clancy. Is Tom uh, Clancy a real person? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's, he's not an like author. he's not like Aunt Jemima's whatever. Like <laughs> Aunt Jemima's yeah, it, Aunt Jemima. Okay. Yeah, I, like on the the <laughs> the pantheon of microwavable rice is yeah. Aunt Jemima, Uncle Ben, Tom Clancy, and John Madden. All fair. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, Mrs. Mrs. Land O'Lake. Yes. Yeah. 
Irish, the Irish Native American. Yeah, the the the, the thick one. <laughs> uh, it's a truly and like after this, I recommend you guys listen to it as well. I think it's uh, it's fantastic. Like I love True and On. I think the hosts are great. Um, the episode specifically is number two nineteen. Uh, clear and pleasant, clear and present Clancy. So check that out afterwards. Because cool. one, the guy they're interviewing is is fascinating, and and they have like a really good dynamic. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I personally have never read a Tom Clancy book, nor seen a single Tom Clancy movie or television show, but I've played quite Can a few tell? Tom Clancy video games. So, like, I'm a gigantic closeted fan of The Division, like I've said. So what is you your guys' You haven't seen Hunt for Red October, dude? No. It's a good movie. I've obviously played Splinter Cell, Chaos Theory. Yeah, that's the uh, one I played on GameCube, Chaos Theory. I, I played three and four, I think. Four was the one where you... I played whichever one you go... You, you turn turncoat, or it seems like you do. Is Rainbow Six Siege a Tom Clancy thing? Yeah. Oh, so I played Probably. six. Yeah, I played six. Rainbow Six Siege then, which is a very good shooter. It's like a slower style shooter, but uh, really, really well done. And still, like, they take care of it. They update it all the time. Yeah, yeah, the big ones would be Rainbow Six, Ghost Recon, and Splinter Cell, all within like the Tom Clancy Uncle Ben umbrella, basically. Okay, so I haven't played, okay. I don't think I've ever played a Ghost Recon game. Maybe, maybe when I was younger, like we rented one for PlayStation 2 or something like that, but there's none that I remember playing. I yeah. uh, have played Rainbow Sixes, uh, the aforementioned Siege, as well as Vegas, I think. Rainbow Six Vegas. Um, yeah, both of my friends had Vegas because it was like the big one on the Xbox, Vegas and was, Vegas 2. Yeah, Vegas was great, honestly. I remember it. that was like when I was really into shooters as well, which I'm very much not now, but um and then yeah, I have seen have seen Hunt for Red October as Patriot Games. Sorry, I'm looking at a list of Tom Clancy books Patri right now. Patriot Games is also another one, yeah. Is also a movie. I'm trying to remember if I've seen it with Harrison Ford. Yeah, I think I've seen this one too. Yeah, so or I think Harrison I've seen... Ford plays Jack Ryan, who's like the the main oh tom clancy guy <laughs> but patriot <laughs> games isn't that what like all the other patriots were playing they wouldn't let tom brady play until they realized he was just as good a football player as everyone else tom brady's <laughs> rainbow six yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah like i've played hundreds of hours of both division games a bunch of the ghost recon games i have the first ghost recon it is incomprehensible and so difficult it is very much like a military <laughs> sim it's so hard yeah um so yeah well let's get into uh who oh, this guy is i've i've uh tom clancy's uh 2010 novel dead or alive i've heard the bon jovi song based on that that book <laughs> okay good very close it says our listenership for this wednesday just dropped to zero that's weird <laughs> dang <laughs> install Sweet. me on the c drive <laughs> so thomas leo clancy jr was born on april 12th 1947 in baltimore maryland to his parents tomboy clancy and femboy clancy okay <laughs> oh, good. okay good, good. <laughs> uh, their actual names are thomas and Catherine clancy all right okay all right. His dad worked for the USPS, which is a U.S. Postal Service, and his mom worked in the credit department of a store. I couldn't find out which one it was, but like I know old credit, like lines of credit, were linked directly to department stores, like Sears. Yeah, like Sears, you could get a line yeah. of credit to buy a washing machine. Yeah, exactly. Uh, also, R.I.P. to Sears. It's uh, taken too soon. <laughs> Gone before it's done. They, they sold uh, more washing machines on loan than they could handle. And, yeah, exactly. Yeah. They, too many, pe too many people. Too many people. Catherine didn't do her goddamn job, okay? Yeah, yeah. it was like the, 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 the subprime washing machine crisis that yeah. like, ruined the economy. <laughs> yep, yep. The, <laughs> the tide bubble burst, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, he graduated from Loyola University, Maryland in 1969. Uh, nice. With a very valuable degree in English literature. And then he signed up for the Army Reserve officer training. Uh, but the Army said due to his thick glasses, he was too blind to kill foreigners. You're he too was, much of a Melville, dude. Come on. He was not allowed to serve. <laughs> I mean, he looks like a dweeb. I'm, I'm looking at oh, pictures at, of him right now. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's uh, I don't know, not an intimidating looking guy, I guess. Some of the pictures he looks okay. But I guess when I Googled books, the pictures it chose to show me were his least flattering ones. 
Like uh, where he, he, has... he might just not be photogenic. There just may be zero good pictures of Tom Clancy out there. Yeah. I mean, that's fair. This one, he's very pale. So yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, so after graduating, he started working for an insurance agency in Hartford, Connecticut. Uh, shout out to Bison. Uh, before starting uh, at OF Bowen Agency in Maryland, which was actually founded by his grandfather-in-law. Only in... fans, Bowen. Yes. <laughs> before they dropped the Bowen. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> good, exactly. Good so, yeah, so Tom Clancy bought Only Fans in, in 1980 from his grandmother-in-law. <laughs> okay. And then yeah, yeah. really started to change this. They went from insurance to feet, which is like, it, it's interesting, but we'll get to the bottom of it here. It's actually a, a pretty a pretty interesting th like straight line yeah. uh that you'll be you'll be surprised that by the end of this was like why tom clancy is selling pictures of feet uh yeah. when, when we're done here we'll, we'll get to the bottom of it or we'll get to the to the cheeks of it uh, yes as we it. <laughs> <laughs> tom clancy's only fans it's just, just a bunch of like naked chicks with guns <laughs> yeah it's like, it's pictures of feet on like an assault rifle or something i, I have to imagine Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's got like the, the little keychain that hangs off the side of the gun is just a foot. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> the hunt for like red only fans, I guess, would be like a ginger fetish one. <laughs> right, right. I suppose. Sorry, that was just like, this is like my my. I'm so tired. My brain just like slowly processing that. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. So in 1980, he bought the agency from his grandmother-in-law and started writing novels in his spare time. Uh, his first novel. The Hunt for Red October was released in 1984, George Orwell, and was sold to the United States Naval Institute for 5,000 1980s American dollars. So I don't know what that converts to now with like inflation and like changing it to Canadian. 5,000 US dollars? 5,000 USD in 1984. Yeah. Ethan is playing the man, uh, the the guy on the <clears throat> on the computer for this, like the, the Tom Clancy guy. I'm going to get the information. I'm almost yeah. in. Uh, yeah, he's the, my man in the chair for this one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, thirteen thousand nine hundred twelve dollars and eighty-five U.S. cents. Still okay. seems like a steal, uh, mm -hmm. because but he uh, sold it to the Navy. Yeah. So the the United States <laughs> Naval Institute was a small, very interesting publisher uh, that said that that also published like a bunch of fucking hits for like dads in the garage because they also published the Coast Guardsman's Manual and the Naval Institute Guide to Ships and Aircraft of the U.S. Fleet. OK. And then also like, you know, how to be a seaman for young boys. Uh you know those kind of novels, and then yeah. the hunt for Red October, just war propaganda. <laughs> yeah, it was just it just like kind of like out of out of nowhere. It was it was the it was one of the the women who worked there, the press editor named Deborah Grovesner. Actually, was just like, yeah, this guy just like sold us this book, and she's like, it's really fucking good. We need to yeah. we we need to publish this one. So Deborah Grovesner, the press editor for the institute, convinced the publisher that they had a hit on their hands uh, after she had read through it. Um, and in my own experience, like being a guy who knows a guy is absolutely like paramount. That's how I found my publisher. But it's like you just got to be lucky enough that the people you're emailing or sending letters to, in his case, like clicks with what you're sending them because it's completely out of your control. Like you've got, of course, you've got like the famous stories of like J.K. Rowling, who is like a billionaire like sent her the first draft of Harry Potter to a bunch of publishers and they were like, uh, it's garbage. This will never yeah. work. And then ended up obviously with the, you know, empire and regrettable Twitter that she has now. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Whereas Tom Clancy mercifully is fucking dead. So we don't need to, we don't need to know yeah. what he thinks Whoa. about anything. Yeah. <laughs> I just learned about, we might have Spoilers. to take a moment. Yeah. Oh, Boy, you, want to, you want to pour one out for Mr. Clancy? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I just got water today. I don't think it'll do him justice. But uh. just dump some water on your floor. It's fine. Okay. Get it. In that that <laughs> pit your landlord dug for the yeah. for the faucet. I'm right on top of it. Yeah. So uh, Clancy, for his part, had pretty modest ambitions. Uh, he really just wanted to sell apparently about like five thousand copies of Red October. In the end, he sold forty five thousand copies of the book. One of which was to President Ronald Reagan, who called it the best yarn, <laughs> which is like such uh, a good review. And obviously getting a signal boost from the president is a pretty good thing. Uh, so the book went on to sell 300,000 hardcovers and 2 million paperbacks. Wow. wow. So um, the lore boys send their regards, Mr. Biden. Uh, 
uh, who is if you want to if you want to give us a little yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> give, uh, give the lore boys the uh, that ain't no malarkey stamp of approval the biden boost no malarkey stamp of approval exactly <laughs> i think we talk too fast if we want the biden vote like we got to go a little bit slower and stuff <laughs> yeah. yeah. gotta ramble a bit gotta wander off you know yeah he's yeah he's he, he's a man of tangents uh, he would love this show <laughs> true <laughs> right we have we have we have big Joe Biden energy on this on this podcast <laughs> where we just occasionally get confused and, and we'll wander off topic for several minutes at a time. Yep. Yeah, like I, I have I have like moments on this show where I like forget how to read things I wrote eight hours ago all the time. Like, that's, like, that's, a, that's a big thing that he does. That's, all the time. that's our calling card. Yeah. 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 <laughs> now, whenever we were doing it, recording in public uh, in, in public in in person, we, we'd also kind of linger a little too long in our handshakes and hugs and sniff each other's hair and do fun things yeah, like that. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tickle each other's boners and things. I always, um, get, the, I always get the barbecue sauce off the tips of uh, off the tips of Jamie's fingers. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Right, just, just Biden things. Yeah. Jamie's clearly been uh, uh, sheltering at home for so long now that uh, the idea of having us two over at his place is being in public is the equivalent of being in public. <laughs> <laughs> I don't that's, know that's... why, man, but like I've just been calling things weird stuff today. What did I call car accidents <laughs> earlier? Bad traffic. Bad traffic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Deaths caused by <laughs> bad traffic. I mean, by definition, maybe the worst traffic, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> But that's a very like politician thing to do, where you're like changing the words around, could just like to be a little bit like a little bit yeah. like extra slippery, right? Like yeah. 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 yeah, like Jamie, I, honestly, you should work for the ad for the administration, you're and right. then you you could be Biden's spin doctor. Yeah, mm -hmm. wouldn't that <laughs> be cool? spin doctor Jibo? Yeah, <laughs> yep. we got uh, we got uh, Jibo here. Jibo coming. He's from Canada. He's gonna replace that ginger girl. Works for MSNBC now. I'm just gonna. Just gonna <laughs> He's got a he's he's got red hair. I like the Irish. Yep. Uh, but Mr. President, the uh, the question was about uh, canceling student debt and uh, the lingering effects of pulling out of the war in Iraq. How to how to just just you, you pay off your debt, G, but we pay you good. We debt. <laughs> 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 imagine if jamie worked for the u.s imagine, government imagine if we got joe biden on the podcast wow oh dude that would be awesome what the we fuck would we him. talk about on his episode tom clancy <laughs> yeah he'd probably he'd probably be into it <laughs> oh, i mean it's totally fair because we're talking about him so much on tom clancy's episode so it'd be a disrespect to tom clancy if we didn't you know take up joe biden's time with tom I clancy think, talk. what if we did the lore of joe biden and just made him correct us I think he, <laughs> he, does, he doesn't remember. Like we can read shit there. directly off it, off Wikipedia and just be like, "Do you do, 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 just like make up other people?" That's, you could you could read a separate Wikipedia page and tell him like, "You remember when you did that?" And he'd just be like, "Yeah." yeah. That'd be a fun yeah. thing. Is trying to sneak in as many like non facts about his life to his own face. You know, yeah. Yeah. like gaslight the president about his own memories. Yeah. Do you remember when you whispered a spell into that moth, uh, into that moth uh, on top of Isengard, and <laughs> from the land of the elves to save you from Spurman, <laughs> Mr. President? <laughs> oh fuck. Uh, if I mean, if that doesn't get us uh, get us our signal boost from the from the administration, then I don't know what will. Hey, and um, before angry Americans crunch at us, our president's been spotted. Or our president, our prime minister, has been spotted multiple times in blackface. So, oh, yeah. you know, we're not saying we're better. Not saying we're better. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's, it's, it's just uh, a signal boost from Trudeau is not nearly as good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so the uh, technical accuracy of Red October allowed Clancy to meet several military officials, including, and I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna fuck his name up, Doctor Steve Pisenik. Sure. Uh, Steve is a Cuban American government official who served under Jerry Ford, Jimmy Carter, Ronald Reagan, and George H. W. Bush. So he's really playing the hits. Wow. Um, and he was the Deputy Assistant Secretary of State, which, with all those like, uh, extra words at the front there i have no idea what his job was but he is a deputy to the assistant secretary of state and I'm, I'm not sure what the u.s secretary of state even does obviously um i i ended up googling this guy and it turns out he's got a youtube channel uh if you guys want to click on the spoiler photo the only one in chat that i had fantastic yeah that's him yeah because i googled him as soon as he said it too because i want to see how to spell his last name yeah um and i would not have guessed if you just show me them at different times, I would never have guessed that they was in person. Because the picture of him when he's young, he has like 
like almost a perm, like curly hair. He's got a very like Magnum PI mustache, but obviously it's like taken in the sixties or fifties, maybe. Yeah. Uh, now he's old. Who thought people get old, huh? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, so Dr. Pizenik is cartoonishly based. Uh, I went to his YouTube channel just cause I found out he had one and had to take a look and see like what the fuck is going on here. Um, he has appeared on Infowars. He okay. claimed that the Sandy Hook shooting was a false flag. So that's Yikes. the guy. The, he claims the CIA did 9-11. And he claims that the Trump administration allowed the Democrats to commit election fraud as like an entrapment sting operation. Oh my wow, God. dude. That, this yeah. guy's like, this guy's not four head, not five head, not six head. This guy's like somewhere in the 20 to 30 head range. <laughs> double, <laughs> double digit head IQ. Like, yeah. absolutely. Oh. <laughs> 100%. Speaking of, of, of base takes, I, I was playing Kingsmaker, uh, the Pathfinder game, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm making, I'm doing character creation. So I'm like, okay, here, I'm going to make a fighter. And I'm like, okay, here's the, all the male voice types. And it's like courageous or like, Oh, uh, this prudent, yeah. or uh, brave or like aggressive and all this stuff or wise and then i switched to the female things and it has the exact same list except you can't be a wise female oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> i did not notice i was yeah. choosing my voice that's hilarious yeah, it, that's and so it's funny. like it, it, like carefree is what they replace it with or something like that um, okay that's yeah. funny because i think that's the voice i took but women carefree. are carefree and men are wise you gotta and boys yeah. are from venus to get more penis or something yeah. and uh women are from jupiter to get more stupider yeah. cat's dog only two cat's dog so, cat's dog <laughs> david was telling me it was like made in russia or something so i don't know if that was like a like a Maybe like a translation difference. Maybe wise doesn't mean like smart. It means like something more masculine over there. But I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Could be. Don't yeah. know. Anyway, yeah. so base uh, takes. Base takes. It, it, uh, uh, yeah. Well, yeah. on on the on returning to the base takes. Uh, yeah. Doctor Pizenik's uh, boomer ass YouTube channel is a fucking trip. Uh, so I found it. Uh, I found it through the picture that I posted for you guys, where it's just like a fat old white guy, and the bold text next to his head just says the truth about the Civil War. Um. Never click on anything like that, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but I did go to his YouTube channel, and he has, like, a bunch of incredible video titles, including Blood Heat, my novel, now, all caps, as audiobook, and <laughs> Rest, what? letter N, what? Paradise, Little Richard. Rest, rest in... <laughs> it's, it's Rest in Paradise, Little Richard. Okay. Because he, he loved Little Richard and like Little I Richard was impersonations, right? Little no. Richard was a musician and a yeah. singer, I think. Yeah. Singer for sure. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking of Rich Little. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. though that Dr. Pizenik listens to our show because on July twenty second, twenty twenty, we released our third and final Divine Comedy episode, Yosemite okay. Sam, Son of God. And then on August fourth, twenty twenty. Dr. Steve released a video called Saul Who, Yo Semites, which is about a conspiracy <laughs> where he believes a man named Saul Alinsky created both Black Lives Matter and the Republican Tea Party by writing his book, Rules for Radicals, like back in the 70s and 80s. That's crazy. Cool. Yeah, the guy's cool. crazy. Uh, his videos, like, while fucked up, are, like, have a certain charm to them. There's a woman who I assume is his wife that starts all the recordings for him. However, they don't edit this part out. So there's just an old lady with various kinds of, like, Mimi Trump 2020 hats, and she just leans forward, and she's always in front of the camera, and is just like, okay, go. And then she leaves, and then he starts his video as if <laughs> setting the timer on a camera. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I, I didn't know if it was a coincidence or anything. I watched the, the beginning of, like, six or seven videos today just to check every single one. His wife is there and just goes, okay, go. And then he gets into whatever the fuck he's talking about. <laughs> okay, I, just, I, I just love the idea that this guy is is uh, so based, so so alpha mindset that he's like, "No, honey, I can't start to tire of myself." Okay, yeah. I got <laughs> script. It's very important. All right, so you got to do it for me. Yeah. Oh my God. It's God. it's crazy but like i the only reason i put this in is because after i googled like who this guy was because he had his own like hyperlink on wikipedia and i was like oh maybe this will be interesting i was not prepared i thought this guy was <laughs> I, I, I thought this guy was gonna be like some government dude because it's like oh met a bunch of officials from the cia who work for the state department because tom clancy's so popular including dr pisanic and i'm like 
why is this one a link? And then I clicked on it. It's like, yeah, he created the Sandy Hook conspiracy Jeez. and has a insane YouTube channel. It's like, oh, do yikes. the people need to know? <laughs> yikes. 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 So wait, yikes. Wait, wait, and I, I, honestly, surrounding Tom Clancy, I have to feel like there's a lot of ca characters like this. Like, I don't know if we're going to meet many, but I have to believe that a lot, a lot of people who are into Tom Clancy are also into this kind of thing. It's, like I said earlier, like Tom Clancy is like the er garage dad who like talks to people about World War II at parties. Like yeah. he's just he's just like this big nerd about like the military. And I'll get into another guy later on um, who is also like who's like I don't know much about him. I, he's definitely not completely fucking insane like Doctor Pisenic here, but like uh, he's you know like I'll get into it. But yeah, there's a lot of people like he's tangentially related, but also remember he like was friends with Ronald Reagan and George H.W. Bush. Like, of yeah. course, the people around Tom Clancy are lunatics, like dangerous yeah, yeah. lunatics. <laughs> I forgot the, the relationship. Like, the guy with the crazy YouTube channel, how is he associated to Tom Clancy again? He was just a guy that loved Red October and oh, okay. that he met. And this guy was the assistant secretary of state for the U.S. government through right. five presidencies. Right. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll also say, like, a very... Probably influential in policy making around uh, the region eighties and nineties. Yeah. Um, who was a big fan of Tom Clancy's work? Who again, like, I think you know we've we've sort of established that at this point in Tom Clancy's career, he wasn't uh, making propaganda for the U.S. government for money, but like he was just doing it because he likes making U.S. Pro U.S. military <laughs> propaganda. I guess, Pretty like, much. Yeah. yeah, and he's good at it. It sounds like, which like, hey, more power to you. Do what you love. But yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, one more little bit of uh, trivia that I have for Dr. Pysanic here is what makes the arguably evil videos that he makes uh, kind of charming in a way is after his wife starts the recording, you can often see him like reach off screen to like affectionately like grab at her or like hold her hand or like grab her thigh or something. And I was just like, hey, man, like casual touching is my love language, too. Like the, the, it's, it's just like it's so it's cute and weird and it's an absolute fucking trip to watch his <laughs> videos and every single one of them is shorter than five minutes wow like it's, it's not like video essays or anything it's like okay. four and a half minutes of just like an old man talking about some crazy shit and old like and he loves man. his wife <laughs> old man yells at clouds for for five minutes pretty much uh, yeah. once a week basically yeah. Wow. <laughs> so yeah now now we can get back to tom uh, a lot of uh, the characters in Tom Clancy novels uh, can be pretty Mary Sue-y, basically. Like, Jack sure. Ryan is one of the guys that he writes about a lot. Uh, he is super skilled, professional, and disciplined at all times. And the only thing that ever, like, help holds him up are, you know, whatever, godless communists and limp dick bureaucrats who, like, just want to push pencils and not actually, course, like, take action. Of course, sort of thing, of course. Right? Yeah. yeah. It's people, a people want accountability for like wanton murder overseas, basically. Like those, exactly. those yeah. feckless cucks, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, Jack Ryan is very much of that. It's it's a classic trope. Uh, Jack Ryan was played by Alec Baldwin in The Hunt for Red October, but has mm -hmm. since expanded to being played. Uh, it has since expanded to the horribly titled Ryan verse which is just what they call for some reason a lot of Tom Clancy's books, opposed to the Tom Clancy universe. Clancy verse. They call it the Ryan verse for some fucking reason. Because yeah, of Jack it's... Ryan. He's been played by Chris Pine, Harrison Ford, Ben Affleck, and currently he is played by Jim from The Office, John Krasinski, yeah, John on Krasinski. the Amazon Prime show. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. I've seen clips yeah. of that. I've seen clips of that. Yeah. I've never I've never seen it personally, but yeah, I have I have Prime. Like I want to check it out because it looks, I don't know, kind of good, I guess. Like John Krasinski is pretty great. Yeah. Um, so we're going to learn about a little bit more from his second novel after the break. Well, come back after the break. Thanks for listening to that ad, everybody. Every 15 cents counts. Five cents. Yeah. Per, or however much ACAS is charging people to broadcast. A hey, show. little known fact about uh, your ad, the ad revenue that you guys generate for the show. The more people who actually hear it, uh, uh, the more money we get. It's not actually based on number of devices. So if you're on your the, headphones if, on the bus. Yeah, yeah, if you're on the bus, just unplug those headphones, turn on the volume. Just the, We don't want people hearing us. We don't yeah. want people associating our show with that kind of behavior. Uh, Do you work but, at like some sort of sports stadium? Plug that yeah. thing in. Okay. Oh, just on the intercom. Only for the ads. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I got a I got a French ad uh, a couple days ago. I can't remember why I was listening to the audio. I like listening. Oh, oh, my it. favorite. My favorite thing is to listen just the first like 20 seconds because I always want to know what you guys have chosen as the cold open. And then I mm -hmm. listen to like nothing else, but I have to sit through a fucking ad to God hear a joke I already heard. Well, three days well Peter, I have good news for you. If you sign up for a Patreon, you get ad free episodes. I don't think we we actually have set that up yet, but I never I never figured out how to get that yeah, done. We should. We should. <laughs> the, the Patreon ad free content is it does technically exist, though. It's bonus audio, baby. Yeah. Yeah. It's not false advertising. Technically. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so Tom Clancy wrote a novel. Now he's got to do another one. Uh, his second novel was called Red Storm Rising. Uh, and this one is actually uh, included with SSN, and they're the only two novels not set within the Ryan verse, where Jack Ryan does not exist in Red Storm Rising nor in SSN. Okay. okay. Uh, Clancy co wrote Red Storm Rising with a guy named Larry Bond, uh, who would go on to create a tabletop gaming rule set called Harpoon, which is like Harpoon is like a pen and paper rule set for. Like military nerds, basically. So if you okay. wanted to have your 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 tabletop gaming night be the Navy or the Air Force or the Army or whatever, you would use the Harpoon rule set, which is so he's just some other like garage dad that co-wrote Red Storm Rising with Tom Clancy. Fuck. Okay. If I ever wanted to to tabletop role play uh, a guy who uh, gets his his toe shot off by uh, a friendly fire while uh, his wife bangs three other guys uh, overseas. <laughs> what is the rule system for me is what you're saying. It, right? That's exactly correct. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Yes. Good to know, good to know, because that is something I'm very interested in. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to make a joke about, like, imagine the... Like when you're at the hobby store, like the harpoon people, and then like there's like the D and D people, and like, but I was starting to think of, there's probably more overlap uh, between all those folks than there 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 is is difference, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah, guys with exposed butt cracks have like very common interests, and I think uh, you know boring naval shit and and Dungeons and Dragons are two peas in a pod, basically. Right. Yeah, right. yeah, for sure, for sure, yeah. for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh fuck. Too bad. Oh no! Yeah, if you want, if you want to play Harpoon, like the latest edition came out in like 2013 or something. Like it got updated for 20 years after uh, a a after Mr. Bond uh, established it. But yeah, you, you can get like a. I I'm sure there's like a rivalry. Like fifth fifth ed is too casual. Then you got like yeah, seventh, exactly. seventh ed is the real Harpoon, basically. <laughs> yeah, I see it on. Uh, it's it's only two players. It's more like Battleship. Yeah, it is a lot. Like yeah, it's. I saw a picture of him playing it. He has like a bunch of little plastic ships on like a what looks like blueprint paper, like blue with white lines on it. It looks yep. tr tr like terminally boring, um, but like it's it, it's a niche that needs filling, man. It's, it's capitalism, maybe I guess. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's money to be made. It's probably also like the a shell company of a shell company of a shell company owned by the CIA, so all profits go directly to like destabilizing foreign countries or something. I would, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't look too much into Larry Bond to see if he was also plugged into the uh, the the deep state, but uh, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he was. <laughs> so if, like me, you've never been to the 80s, uh, you'd probably be more familiar with Tom Clancy's name thanks to video games, uh, starting with Rainbow Six back in 1998. So I, like I was saying, have not seen his films or read his books, but I've played his video games. Um, the novel... Rainbow Six was released in August 1998, uh, with the video game coming two weeks later. Oh uh, wow! So they were like, they he like knew it was coming out the novel, and he was like, "Oh, you guys are making a video game. I'll I'll write a book for your video game story, it, basically, and you guys can do it while I write." Like, it was a tandem. It was a tandem deal. Yeah. So wow. yeah. So he had he had given uh, Red Storm Entertainment or something like that, who were uh, it was published by Ubisoft. He had given Red Storm Entertainment the outline of what so Rainbow Six was going to be about. So much red in everything. There's red in the communist. First... Yeah. 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 Exactly. So Red um, Storm Entertainment is run by communists. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And okay. Rainbow Six, uh, it's you know every member of the six man squad mm -hmm. is uh, a different part of LGBT. QI, QI, I guess, yeah. Oh, only, only so many. <laughs> oh my god. Tom, yeah. What, was Tom Clancy like, did he have okay views or did he like, was he homophobic? I wonder. 
I don't know if he was homophobic. I'd, I'd assume he probably was. He leans um, pretty. He leans pretty right, given given his writing. And I just want to say, like, again, having never read a Tom Clancy novel, uh, I'm a fan of books. I guess you could say. Uh, but the fact that this came out in parallel with a video game is just like so indicative that like your art has either has never had any soul or has completely lost all soul that you're like, oh no, I'm, I'm writing a book to make money for sure. And I'm like setting up merchandising deals with like other people and writing books around that basically. Like, yeah. again, hey, very popular. I'm sure they're like gripping reads. Like I, I've never read Tom Clancy, but I have read like Robert Ludlum or, or Dan Brown or whoever. And they're these very like- Airport novels, <laughs> right? It's like the genre. reads. Yeah, exactly. And like, where you just like, you can burn through them. Like it's a big book and you burn through it in a day because it's just like compelling, I the guess. The fact yeah. that he- has his name on everything too like if you look into other video games sure there are some where they go like tony hawk's pro skater tony hawk was good at skateboarding they get like yeah, exactly. dave mira's pro bmx dave mira's good at tom clancy's not good at being a military man he just writes about yeah. it no yeah he, he was yeah. he was rejected for his coke bottle glasses yeah, yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> was, they, they called him a stupid nerd and they said no you're too nerdy for the reserves dude yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the, the reserves you go write a book nerd officer core yeah like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he he applied to be a pencil pushing bureaucrat, and they said no. Your glasses are gay. Get out of here. <laughs> but um, yeah, so Rainbow Six uh, is the rainbow because it's an international team of spies. So not quite. I was gonna say not quite LGBT, but absolutely LGBT. Like a hundred percent thing. Like if all those people were paid to murder people in foreign countries, if that's that was your identity, it's the exact same thing as the flag. Sure. Yeah. Sure. 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 Hundred percent, hundred percent. Rainbow Six is actually the code name uh, of the novel's lead, who is named John Clark. He is the second very cool and strong Irish Catholic within the Ryan verse. So there's two, uh, right. two to now. date. Yeah, well, no, there's there's two total now because, uh, like I said earlier, there's only two novels that Clancy ever wrote that were not part of the Ryan verse. John Clark is within the Ryan verse. He's just another cool Irish Catholic guy. <laughs> okay, cool, cool, cool. If you yeah. want to be in, your name, your first and last name cannot exceed three syllables, and they have to be white yeah. names. Uh, yeah, two, for, two first names, because you've got Jack names, Ryan, and Ryan and John Clark. Yeah. yeah. No last names. This is a Ricky last Bobby. name free zone, baby. Right. Yeah. Ricky Bobby uh, of Talladega Knight's fame is canonically in the Ryan verse as well. So Yeah, 100%. Right. Yeah. Oh, I'll be James Peter or uh, Ethan James or uh, <laughs> Ethan no. Hawk is a pretty close one. Ethan Hawk, okay, yeah. That one. I mean, that, that's a that's a guy, right? That's, that's a real act- man. That's an yeah. actor, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. He's great too, but yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, Rainbow Six. Uh, it's it's the code name of the uh, of the, the 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 lead of the unit. So John Clark is the head of Rainbow, the team of international super, <laughs> the murderous gays, I guess is what they are now, yeah, right? Yeah. right. Um, and he is Rainbow Six, and there's a Rainbow Five, three, four, two, one sort of thing. Uh-huh. Okay. Three, four, two, uh, one. Of course, I go completely out of order for some reason. Yeah, uh, you you know how numbers work. Yeah, um, you know, yeah who cares? <laughs> so, so bigger number is more important. Yes. Is what you're saying, okay. Yeah. Not, not the opposite like they do in like races where it's like, one is best or no, golf first, or one first is, is worst in this one isn't, this year. one isn't best in golf but it's better than anything higher than one <laughs> i mean yeah Negative i guess 18 one is would... better is in golf uh, well, if you're talking about par i was talking about total strokes oh okay, okay. <laughs> yeah i was thinking total strokes is well. minimum score right <laughs> 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 yeah because you'd have to be like below par it would be like a minus score but like yeah, in the right. end you can only yeah eight, for sure for sure 18 minimum right yeah i clearly don't watch golf very often <laughs> i've been golfing and like mini putt basically i used to do mini putt all the time yeah mini putt's great not as good as bowling but bowling's uh maybe the goat drunken uh outing i don't know 100%. i think I, i'm mini bu- uh, mini putt over bowling but i've done more bowling so maybe it's because uh there's a the novelty. There's yeah, a novelty. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's scarcity when it comes to mini golf for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> corner from a bowling alley. You don't live around the corner from a, a golf course. Yeah, so, that is true. I've never. I don't live. Golf. There is a golf course not far, but I, I can't go just use it for fun. Yeah. My first job was on a golf course. It was horrible. Oh yeah, my my stepbrother worked on one. He said he had a lot of fun. They would like 
when it was time to close, they had to check that there's no one left on every, on all of the golf course. So they would just like each take a golf cart and just race each other and like bump into each other the whole way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, I work. At, <laughs> I started work at five in the morning because I was a landscaper. I was like, uh, or a groundskeeper rather. So I would like clean up the sand traps and shit like that, uh, and like yeah. do all the do all the raking to even it out. It was horrible. I do yeah. remember there was one time where we were. I think my my buddy Stuart and I were in the traps, like cleaning it out, like raking it to make it smooth. And we just hear this guy just like, it's up, like blowing, like collapsing his lungs to make sure that we didn't get hurt because his, uh, his ball had gotten caught by the wind and he didn't want to hit one of us. So we just like, like dove into the sand. <laughs> and and he, 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 he missed us by a fucking mile. Like we were in no danger whatsoever, but this man <laughs> really was just like, I cannot kill two 16 year old boys today. My, I'm, <laughs> I'm halfway through a divorce. It's going to be, this is just going to make that my weekend a, even worse. If he killed both of you, that would have been a nice shot though. Like, yeah. pong, like off the table. Yeah, pretty good, good, right? Yeah. Two birds with one stone, kill two yeah. teenage boys with one golf ball. Right. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, so the novel rainbow six, uh, no golf. As far as I know, Jack Ryan uh, could have killed two teenage boys with one golf ball, though. Let's oh, Jack absolutely. Ryan would 100% absolutely. do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. John Clark as well. Yeah. Both of them skilled enough to kill two teenage boys with one golf ball. <laughs> um, the novel Rainbow Six follows the team, uh, codenamed Rainbow, like I said, as they try to foil the plot of some eco-terrorists. So you are right, Jamie. Um, I'll talk about it more later. Uh, Tom Clancy is conservative. Um, based on whatever a fucking Republican is now, he probably seems quite moderate. <laughs> exactly by today's by <laughs> today's standards frankly but Comparatively. like like still he would probably vote you know like he i don't whatever conservative guy so uh the fact that the enemies uh, the villains of rainbow six are eco-terrorists is not super surprising because like homeboy probably likes him some fossil fuels yeah huh. exactly he's, he's right? you know goddamn hippies are getting in the way of my making mo- my letting billionaires make a bunch of money Exactly. They, they, yeah. they, them damn liberals can't take away my right to let billionaires get rich off my sweat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And him with his multiple pens- penthouses and his ranch because Ronald Reagan sold three million books for him. Yeah, is, yeah exactly. Is just like, you know, that probably fucks up the way you... That probably fuck up the way I think, too, uh, if yeah. I'm going to be perfectly honest. Like, to be fair. To be fair. That, that, that's, like, that, that, that's a hardcore psyop right there when Ronald Reagan's selling books for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um... The right, so they follow an extreme version. Uh, the eco terrorists within Rainbow Six follow an extreme version of Jean Jacques Rousseau's naturalism philosophy, where he said that uh, humanity's uh, primitive state is morally superior to where we are now, uh, and they wanted to use a bioweapon to call the human population. And it's it it's straight up like the meme. It is uh, uh, abandoned tradition or like abandoned modernity uh, returned to monkey. monkey. Yep. Is yeah. is Jean Jacques Rousseau? A hundred percent. Okay. And, and those are the villains. Those are the hippie liberal bad guys of Rainbow Six. Of course. Of course. Yeah. The game was actually completed before the novel because the game had to be written and then programmed way in advance prior to being able to release two weeks after a book, obviously. Of course. Yeah. Especially, especially in the fucking 90s. Um, and it differs slightly. However, it still sees a Rainbow team uncovering the eco-terrorists led by the Horizon Incorporated. Or like the Horizon Corporation is what it was is what it's called in in Rainbow Six. Was it? Ubisoft? And they wanted to unleash. Sorry, it was Ubisoft back then. Yeah, they published it, but this is still Red Storm. Okay, okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah. They wanted to unleash the bioweapon uh, at the Olympics, which is like the that that's kind of like a trope that's also carried on in the same way that just like Olympic bureaucrats or the guys getting in the way of like the 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 whatever the cop with nothing to lose that Tom Clancy's kind of like writing within. Uh, doing terrorism at the Olympics. I guess yeah. Munich probably happened in the seventies. But yeah, like doing terrorism at the Olympics is is like the terrorist shortcut to like hit as many countries as possible because they're all in the same room together, sort of yeah. thing. I mean, it goes to I, I I think the message that they're sending is usually like uh, it's like you say like you're you're affecting multiple countries. Like if yeah. you take if you take a hostage from if if you just do a terrorist attack on U.S. soil. Then like why why like Germany will care ostensibly right Ru- Russia would would care even you know ostensibly but uh, like if you if you take a Russian and you take a German and you take an American they're gonna care a lot more right wow. is the idea someone's thought a lot about All at the this. same time 
I have, yeah. I, I have some uh, I have some drawings I got to show you guys later. But uh, <laughs> cooking up something big for this week's Lore Boys Prime, let me tell you. <laughs> Yo, the Lore Boys care about climate change, and we are going to prove it in a big way. <laughs> anyway, stay tuned. Stay tuned. Okay, TM, TM. Yep. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, like the, the, uh, attacking the Olympics. Because it did, it did happen, of course, in the '70s, in 1979 or something like that. I, I don't remember when the Munich thing was, but attacking the Olympics now is, of course, it's like this big global event where if you if you want to, you know, it, it if if you want to be the ultimate guy who kills two kids with a golf ball, you attack the Olympics. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you can kill you, so you, many more kids with one you, go, one golf ball. If you want to kill two two kids from two different countries with one golf ball, that's where it gets really tricky. Yeah, the Olympics, Olympics is the Olympics place to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like if you were taken as a prisoner of war from the Olympics, uh, especially in recent times, you'd be fed better as a prisoner of war than you were at the Olympics. Did you guys see <laughs> yeah. how they were fed? Like three noodles with like a, a dollop of like cheese whiz on top of it, and it's like here you go. Here's your Olympic meal. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> I haven't seen. But no, it, <laughs> wasn't there like a one that were like the they were completely exposed to the elements, and some of the athletes were just like, "Yo, wild wolves got into the hotel." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's been crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's, being an it's, Olympian it's... seems like arguably worse than just being in the military because <laughs> yeah. you you get sent to the for you get sent to a foreign country by a government that does not care about you to a host country that cares about you even less. So, like, honestly, being in the army is probably better than being an Olympian. <laughs> the wolves. Okay. It doesn't matter if you call a reception. The wolves are here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> wolves at the gates by Tom Clancy. Yeah. Yeah. Wol- wolves at the Marriott by Tom Clancy. Yeah, like wolves in the lobby. Yeah. <laughs> I think, uh, are the Soviets... Well, no, it's, it's they're bears. That's true. Right. Yeah. It's the Russian bear is the animal. Yeah. Dang. Too bad. Because that could have been a really good one. I mean, there's something about like sports teams like Wildcats versus Timberwolves or whatever, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, well, somebody probably. write that joke and let us know. <laughs> so, I'm, too tired. I'm too tired. I won't do it now. Um, so eventually, uh, they, they foil the plot. It, it, this is in the game and also in the novel of Rainbow Six. Uh, they foil the plot and eventually track the leader of Horizon Incorporated back to like what's called the Ark Facility, which is in the Brazilian jungle. So that's where they built their base to like write out the viral apocalypse that they had uh, they had tried to rot, like try to set out or set in motion. Um, a a man made pandemic is also the plot of the division. Where yeah. it's called the it's called the green flu, which on Black Friday, uh, evil Russian scientists <laughs> and corrupt uh, corrupt government officials like coat money in a, a, in the flu virus, basically, and that's what it leads to the end of the world in the division games. That's what Trump would have called coronavirus if it came from Ireland. <laughs> Bl- what the, the green, green flu? flu. <laughs> <laughs> uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck he, he would he would have done it <laughs> yeah good god uh so the one one of the differences between the novel and the game is the uh strengthened ebola virus uh in the novel is called shiva whereas in the game it's called brahma for some reason so they just chose a different like hindu god yeah what's the difference between those gods yeah, I don't know. Shiva's in uh, there are now there are now over twenty Rainbow Six games, all developed or published by Ubisoft. I think there's twenty three. It is the largest Tom Clancy TM branded product. Is Rainbow Six? Dang. Siege is bad. Siege is good if uh, if you're looking for a multiplayer slow shooter. Siege is hard as fuck. I could yeah. not. Get, I could not figure it out. I was. I was too bad. Um, the second largest one, though, uh, is one that I like a lot. The second largest Tom Clancy franchise is Ghost Recon. Uh, I've played the first three, which is Ghost Recon, and there's, like, Desert Storm and Jungle something. They are insanely difficult. Like, they're they're just, like, shooter, they're, like, squad military sims where you don't even see your gun, you just have a reticle. And it's, like, one shot, one shot kill, one shot death. It's fucking insane. Um, Advanced Warfighter, which I think is in Iraq, uh, is also insanely hard on PC because uh, Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter, which was like a launch title for Xbox 360, I want to say. The console version is a third-person shooter. 
whereas the PC version is like a hardcore military sim. And I remember there was like, I played through half of it on PC because I have it on Steam. And eventually there's like this mission with a fucking like a rope bridge and I just could not get past it. Okay. There's like, there's no cover and you just get killed and I gave up, <laughs> basically. Yeah. I remember playing like Chaos Theory or Ghost Recon. One of, I Chaos Theory is Splinter Cell. Splinter Cell is Chaos Theory. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah. Which I have and have never played. Yeah, it was like slow. It was slower than I was. I'm used to playing those types of games, and then I remember like true stealth, where like yeah. you can't run yeah. and gun. Really, you have yeah. to be sneaky, sneaky. Yeah. I have two Splinter Cell games on UPlay, which I got for free, and I've never played them, but I really want to because I know they're good. And you I probably will get like it. them, honestly. Like, yeah, because I love Thief and uh, and yeah, Dishonored. Like stealth, well. like, yeah. Hardcore stealth is is right up my alley. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but back to Ghost Recon here briefly. Uh, the series started in 2001, and it follows the Group for Specialized Tactics, which is the GST, which is uh, one of our taxes in Canada. Yeah. But that's where they, that's the um, backronym, I guess, that Tom Clancy wanted to figure out. Is like, why are they called ghosts? Well, it's because yeah. it's GST, which is Group Special Tactics. And then, like, we'll, we'll workshop from there, basically. Group, huh. Oh, special tactics. <laughs> <laughs> that worked. Yeah. Um, the ghosts themselves are not particularly different than Rainbow. Uh, it's just a group of very cool soldiers who go on various anti-terrorism missions in the past, present, and future. Because Ghost Recon Future Soldier uh, is uh, excellent, for one, and is set in 2024. That came out in 2009. Okay. Okay. That one has like very basic, like, I don't know, like, not like advanced technology in it, but like, what if the thing you currently have was slightly cooler level technologies, basically? Yeah. What if what if it's the thing you already have, but it it displays in a hologram instead of yeah, on a exactly. screen? Yeah. I I love sci-fi phones that are like a transparent shard of glass that you can see through because it's just like in the future your phone is worse because now you yeah, can they, you can see your feet behind it, which is like yeah. somehow better. <laughs> yeah, they, just, they just made it harder to read. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> People can read your text from behind the phone and everything. Yeah, yeah like yeah. backwards. <laughs> um, this guy's just writing red rum a bunch <laughs> <laughs> going going to the capitol building he's just like reading his like tom clancy fiction <laughs> uh so splinter cell is the third largest uh in the tom clancy line with 11 games i did not count the ghost recons but it's like close to 20 i think i think rainbow six was like 24 total and then you go okay. ghost recon and then 11 um Splinter Cell ones. It's a series of stealth espionage games that were actually inspired by Metal Gear and Thief. Now, I've never played Metal Gear, but I fucking love me some Thief, so I might, you know, I might just install Chaos Theory, or even, I have the first one and then Chaos Theory on, on Uplay, which maybe I'll give them a shot at some point. Um, weirdly enough, Splinter Cell seems to have died with Tom Clancy himself. Uh, a new game has not come out since 2013, which is when he died. Oh, my. Wow. Yeah. I I'd couldn't do it without just, him. Yeah, exactly. It's just like, I don't know, keep releasing other shitty games uh, instead of making anything good. <laughs> Wait, uh, but there's been a novel since. There's a Splinter Cell novel released in 2022. Oh no, <laughs> Tom, he's still, he's still around. It, it's, even, it's even called Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell colon firewall 2022 really not right. colon firewall but the colon is like an actual like grammatical <laughs> colon it's not right. a colon firewall yeah, yeah colon <laughs> colon firewall <laughs> stay out of them butts yeah <laughs> don't let them hack your butts this year the commies are trying to hack your butt <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the game's lead is named sam fisher and he used to be voiced by hollywood actor michael ironside and he is excellent at it uh the latest game uh recast sam and seems to have destroyed the franchise now this is a funny thing that i noticed is the uh complete destruction of this the splinter cell franchise seems to be the reason that jade raymond who was the woman in charge of ubisoft toronto for a while resigned right again like rich people never get fired they resign uh and then it, i think this kind of like started her curse because after she worked at Ubisoft and resigned, she worked for EA Montreal, which shut down after Mass Effect Andromeda came out. 
And then she moved to the Montreal office for Google Stadia, which is also shut down. Also shut down. So it's kind of one of those things. It's like if Jade, if she's like that cat who like sleeps at the foot of your bed in an old folks home, like waiting to die. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like if Jade <laughs> Raymond walks into the office, in you better home. start. Yeah, you've got to you start emailing out fucking resumes because it's like, you know, it's, she's the harbinger of doom, apparently. <laughs> um, Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell Firewall. Uh, I'm going to read you the plot real quick. Okay. Uh, it, it features Sam Fisher working with his daughter, Sarah. Uh, the plot finds Fisher facing off against an assassin from his past and a sinister threat to global security. A powerful cyber warfare technology known as Gordian Sword, capable what? of <laughs> capable of cutting through any firewall in existence, to be auctioned off to the highest bidder in a rogues gallery of terrorist criminals and renegade states. So I think it's a reference to the Gordian Knot, which was this like famous knot that. Uh, oh, it's these, on the end of a wolf's people. penis. So that whenever yeah. they, they can't, yeah, they make sure <laughs> they that another wolf out, yeah. doesn't come in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. No, it's uh, it was this <laughs> apparently like un, ununtangable, ununtangable knot, basically that uh, they presented to Alexander the Great as like a novelty, saying like nobody could untie this, and he just cut it with his sword. And said, "There, there you go." Is the the story okay. of the Gordian knot, basically? So it's like oh. it, it's something that that can't be can't be cut. That has like a so the Gordian sword would be something that just cuts through an un like a, a a permanent knot, basically. Right. Okay. Okay. There's your I would there's love. Your... Are we gonna read it? On, right the now? Gordian, the the entire firewalls <laughs> uh, book. Yeah. Yeah. The, the two boys episode. We just uh, pirate an ebook. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I I would love to go one of those like dark money billionaire auctions. It's always in like the the secret basement facility of like some sort of like Victorian mansion. Like the one that like the people go to buy dinosaurs from in like the in like the more recent Jurassic Park movies. Cuz that's where you would get the USB with your Gordian knot on it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Uh right. So some of the uh games that have Tom Clancy's name on them weren't massive. Uh so like Hawks with an X uh, which is about fighter pilots and end war i think had like one or two games oh um, and- the mcu uh where robert downey jr gets murdered <laughs> end war yes yeah there's end tom war. clancy's the quest for bikini bottom two uh-huh, uh-huh. That yeah a, that was a big hit uh-huh, uh-huh. i, I love yeah. being able to snipe Squid- squidward right in the head while he's playing that yeah. uh that that clarinet that was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. It, it's like a hitman game where you have to yeah. like you have to like case Squidward's Easter Island head and like <laughs> figure out the the optimal time where he's got like an open eye window so that yeah. you can set up the creative accident or you put like a yeah. whatever like a stick of dynamite or something. Yeah, <laughs> you know it's hard to kill that plankton kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very yeah. Small. Hard to assassinate. Hard to assassinate. Hard to get you a get hard to get a laser dot on him. He's he's only as big as a laser dot. So <laughs> yeah, you know. It's hard to keep it on them. Uh, there's Tom Clancy's uh, Hell Kitchen, which is, uh, <laughs> you know, where if you if you fuck up the puff pastry, you get waterboarded. <laughs> <laughs> all, all, the, all, all the dishes are like force fed to the to the judges, basically. With <laughs> the tube to the nose. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, there's... Or you, uh, you know, just like Gordon Ramsay takes like a beautiful meal and just like puts it into a blender and like yeah. but like mixes it with like Cuban seawater and then puts yeah. it. In the- <laughs> How to cook a grenade, right? Oh yeah, my yeah, fucking yeah, god! Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Tom, Tom, Tom Clancy's, Clancy's Top Gun challenge. Top Gun, yeah, the new one just came out. Tom Clancy's Top Gun, where yeah. uh, an aging Tom Cruise uh, carpet bombs. Uh, an underprivileged village, basically. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. They flew the jets. They they did the carpet bombing for real this time because uh, Tom t- Tom Cruise loves doing his own war crimes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> can't stop him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's in his contract. He has to be able to do his own war crimes. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's so funny. I was talking to uh, I was talking to my pretty lady, and uh, uh, she I had mentioned I had not seen Top Gun on a previous episode, and she sent me a fucking DM. She was like, "Have you never seen Top Gun for real?" I'm like, "Yeah, I have no fucking idea what that movie's about." She's, <laughs> she's like we need to fucking watch it and then we're gonna go see the new one because the new one is like 99 percent or like 96 percent on fucking rotten tomatoes and i'm like honestly 
real jets are very cool. Like I'm kind of a hick. I've been to a bunch of air shows and I remember like my favorite one was the one that was so loud. They just tell the people in the audience to just cover your ears because this will do permanent damage to you. And I was like, <laughs> fuck yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Top Gun's very good and the soundtrack is very good. I had on uh, in university way past the time where you should have cassettes. I had a cassette of Top Gun and would listen to it and it was you have like take your breath away boom, yeah boom. Plenty of audience, yeah. Man. uh i'm, I'm sure fucking... uh tom clancy fucking loved that movie yeah yeah oh for sure for 100%. sure yeah right up when, did it, come, when did it come out uh, the 80s for sure like 85 yeah. i'll guess right in the middle uh, 85 after, i'll guess 88 uh, after red october because i haven't seen that movie either but i did watch the intro today uh uh, Pete, you getting uh so Red October came out in what, eighty four? Uh no, the book the book did the movie came out afterwards. Okay. Well give us a year, Pete. I said eighty eight. Uh Jamie said eighty five. Yeah. Uh for Top Gun? Yeah. I've got it up. Eighty six. You 86. got it. Nailed it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, just in the middle there. Hopefully by the next episode I'll I'll have watched it so I stop bringing shame to my family. Maybe. Yeah. Other Maybe you love. On, uh, on the subject of uh, 80s stuff, uh, in 2008, Ubisoft just bought the rights to Tom Clancy's name, uh, which is why all this kind of disconnected crap just has Tom Clancy's title on it, like X Defiant, the RAR XD shooter that nobody wants to play. Yeah. Again, like, I, I don't, I don't want to judge an artist when I, when I haven't consumed any of his direct artwork, uh, but... Just giving up your name for any old jackass to put it on any piece of shit that they print out, it kind of kind of tells me that you're pretty disconnected <laughs> from the art. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like he had he had humble beginnings, right? He wanted to sell five thousand copies of Red October, but yep. Reagan blew up his spot, and that's okay. Like uh, that would fuck me up too. I I this is the second time I've said it. I, that, yep. That'd be a lot of pressure. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, like Tom Clancy is very much like John Madden, where um, EA bought John Madden's name, but instead of like, like, because Ubisoft kind of just uses um, Tom Clancy's name now, whether it's just like, it's just like a label that's just like, this game has a gun in it. It's like, yeah. a, like Tom Clancy's whatever, right? Like, and then they put John Madden on EA. It's just like, yeah, you get to play as a guy who has brain damage and kills his wife in 10 years. Is like, as that indicator on that one for their football okay. games. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Uh, so now we can get into a little bit of his beliefs, just as we can close it out. Uh, politically, as we have clearly surmised, uh, Clancy was very much like an 80s American conservative, uh, which really should come as no surprise because it's like one, how closely he was tied to the government, but he was already like a fanboy of the military when he wrote a book in his spare time. Uh, he loved Ronald Reagan already uh, and was friends with tons of people within the intelligence community. And really, like Tom Clancy wasn't so much like lightning in a bottle, like he was very much like the bottle that Cold War lightning was like trapped in, like so much Cold a, War. He was media. a lightning rod. Yes. Yeah. He uh, okay. was a lightning Tom. His name was. <laughs> is that the orb? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> lightning Tomcat is when you pin a Tomcat to your roof for, uh, during a lightning storm. So it oh, redirects okay. it from your house. Uh, and, and to get into the ground. Sorry, I didn't realize you were joking. I was like, "Oh, is it is it called a lightning tom instead of like a, <laughs> instead of like a Rodney <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, exactly. Thomas and Rodney?" Yeah. Um, yeah, but themes you like to write about are still around in in like a lot of the modern games bearing his name. Uh, like I was talking about earlier, the division. The plot is still about evil Russians and like inept politicians leaving the savior of like the country to just like regular old americans right like the the division you play as like an agent disguised as a civilian basically and you just wait to be activated by the government through like the 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 protocol or whatever yeah. and you yeah, like the main villain of of the division two is the speaker of the house i think um so it's like the president's dead the vice president disappeared and then the speaker of the house is this other guy who is like sided with like a pmc he's using like a private military to try and restore order but like you work for the u.s government as the division agent so you're the good guy when you're yeah. sl slaughtering armed civilians and him who the speaker of the house like hires a pmc separately and he's the bad guy for some reason like obviously naturally, like naturally yeah yeah he's, 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 he's 
very much uh very much that sort of thing but yeah that's been uh the only thing that stops it the only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun uh Mm -hmm. and in this in this situation you know the flu is a bad guy with a gun so you gotta you need a good guy with a gun to stop the green flu you gotta kill him Mm -hmm. you gotta kill the flu and kill anybody who's trying to deal with it in a way that you did not decide uh how to do because there's a lot there's a lot of people like within the division like trying to deal with it in their own way oh, yeah. like there's like the people with the flamethrowers are just like we're burning garbage because it's covered in germs and you're just like no you're bad and i shoot you i use a gun <laughs> instead that that's free, that's that's american garbage you goddamn commie you can't just burn <laughs> <it>. <laughs> look at them yeah, flames, I'm not gonna, we're red. gonna ship it to the philippines yeah you hey, can't burn not. that yeah, you're burning it. You're turning it red. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. I got it. I got it. Um, but yeah, that's uh, a little bit about Mr. Tom Clancy, Tom Leo Clancy Jr. Tom Leonardo da Vinci Clancy Jr. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, what a guy. I've, been your, I've been your host, Peter Rodonio. You can find me at Little Voice Podcast on Instagram, or uh, you can come say hello uh, first weekend of July 2022 at Montreal Comic Con. I'll be there with... My publisher, Squared Idea, and also the lads. Uh, oh, we'll, have t- we'll have a table there. It's uh, Ju- July 9th to 11th, I want to say. It's the first weekend in July. Come coming. on down. We're going to be playing Harpoon. We're going to be role-playing some mm-hmm. uh, some Shellshock soldiers uh, <laughs> and uh, having a, a grand old time. Uh, I'm going to fake so much trauma. It's going to be awesome. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, lads. J- J- Jamie, what about you? Uh, find me online. Go into the Discord. Discord's the best place to reach me. I was playing with like Han Dolo Mother Gunship just a couple nights ago, and uh, we just like basically played through this game where you get to put your guns together like Lego, and then find more gun pieces to make more bigger guns and stuff. Uh, lots of fun stuff going on in the Discord. So just get more there. gun bigger. Yeah. yeah, you guys were burning the midnight oil. I I went to bed at like twelve thirty, and and you guys were still posting until like two in the morning. Yeah, I think I went bed around three on the weekends. Uh, I'm a little bit of a, a night owl. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Hoot hoot. Yeah. Uh, if you guys like the show, consider leaving us a, a five star review or a two thumb up or whatever your uh, podcast app might have. Uh, and if you guys want to make the extra effort to go to iTunes, uh, it's a great place to leave us a review as well. Um, if you guys wanted to support the show financially, uh, you know, if you guys wanted to be our Ronald Reagan or I, I guess be one of the people who listened to Ronald Reagan, I'm not sure. Uh, either way, you can go to patreon.com slash the lore boys. Uh, yeah, Ronald is- Reagan's like the, the original five star review i guess is is yeah, i guess yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ronald, ronald reagan was nothing but a uh, out of context uh, blurb basically <laughs> uh, and uh, oh the damage he did oh the places you'll go oh the damage you'll do um, ronald reagan <laughs> oh, dr seuss thing. Just like, this is like those burning oil pipes just as far as i can see it's yeah, like exactly. the seussian trees <laughs> 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 patreon.com slash the lore boys <laughs> there is a link in the description of this episode as well as a link to the discord if you guys want to get in touch with us like jamie yeah. said uh and if you guys uh don't trust uh patreon as none of us do uh and if you guys don't trust dr seuss as none of us do of course <laughs> the, we are working the, on our <laughs> all the daughter birds get waterboarded i'm trying to where's, where's... <laughs> Where's the where's the weird Doctor Seuss rhyme in the War Crimes? Yeah, you know? yeah so so yeah. this the, for Lord Boys Prime, we are looking for funding to fund our our pro war Doctor Seuss alternative, uh, Doctor Goose, uh, which is oh, gas yeah. but pronounced weirdly. Well, yeah, um, he's from Top Gun. Yeah, Top Gun. Yeah, is yeah. Goose is the guy, right? <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, that's right, what right, I thought right, you were right, doing. Right. Yeah, I right. I remember one animal, one one animal from like. Uh, the ABCs of Dr. Seuss is called a Fiffer Feffer Feff. And it's just like this kind of skinny little Grinch thing with all these like big feathers on its head. And that's the the thing that I imagined getting just fucking waterboarded by a Marine. Fucking killing me. Sam with like a cigar put it putting it on <laughs> his fucking arm. The Fiffer Feffer Feff didn't pay his American taxes. <laughs> 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 oh, all, oh no it's all the places you'll guantanamo is obviously <laughs> uh, all, all the places you'll guantanamo go yeah <laughs> very good uh very good. so obviously we're working on it we do, we do need your guys support so uh if you guys have any uh dr seussian comparisons to the state of the world today uh please send them in uh you can find links to our lore boys prime uh at a sears near you 
um, just ask <laughs> for the credit lady, and she'll point she'll point you guys right to us. Yep. Uh, and with that, I think I'm pretty confident in saying, hey, "Lore boys, nice. lore boys, out, out." At least I'm going to get a show on the airplane because somebody else is going to notice and shit's going to happen. You might get duct taped to a seat or something. That's fun. <laughs> but there's no recourse they, to, they, to they, they duct tape his yeah. cock to his pants. Like, to, yeah. <laughs> or you need to be <laughs> Just kind of his little hands, just like on the other side of his hips. And he's just out of reach, basically. Like, just, <laughs> his fingertips could just brush the shaft, just tickle the shaft. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>